Hello and welcome to the 5 Minute Film Club. And this isn't a review of Sleuth. That will be coming very, very soon. I just haven't had the time to be able to sit down and watch the film and write the notes that I need to, and more importantly, actually film and edit it. So I thought I would just do a quick review roundup of the last two films I saw at the cinema. First up, Ghostbusters. Oh, the internet trolls had their fun, didn't they, before this film came out? Yes, those horrible, evil little commenters on the internet. And when the film came out, that wasn't enough for you. No, you still had to go online and produce more bile. So uh, thank you, well done for that. Of course, all of this is sarcastic and uh, I hate you. So anyway, the review of Ghostbusters. It's a good film. It's a good, funny film. I just wish I had more that I could like about it. That's really sad. It would be really nice if this film had come out and had just wowed the world, but it kind of came in and it, everybody was like, yeah, oh, that's good. That's yeah, nice, you know. Anyway, the good about it is the comedy and the interactions between the four amazing lead female role. They are wonderful together. You can clearly see they like each other and uh, their improv in various parts of the film is fantastic. Leslie Jones especially is pitch perfect for the role. She brings so much fresh, live energy to the screen. It is uh, a joy to watch. Also on the good side is the kind of creature design and the fact that it retains the scariness of the original Ghostbusters. I'm not a massive Ghostbusters fan. I came to it a lot later than most. I think when I was younger, it was just too scary, the idea of Ghostbusting. And the, the ghosts are actually scary. And uh, I'm glad that the effects have, you know, been carried over to this one. And even though they're, they've got um, CGI manipulation, you can see that they're real people as the ghosts uh, acting on some green screen somewhere. But um, yeah, it brings it brings a, a it brings a life. Is is that wrong to say? To their to their ghostliness, their ghoulishness. The other great thing is Chris Hemsworth. Please, can we have him in more comedy roles? Just please. Oh, it's too loud. Yeah, the bad. It just feels a bit like an extended Saturday Night Live sketch. The joke goes on a little bit too long. And that's only heightened by the uh, celebrity cameos and uh, people from the original Ghostbusting team that uh, are in the film. Some of them work a lot better than others. The main, main, main problem that I had with the film is that the plot, basically, is rather boring and uh, is told in a pedestrian way. I really wanted more get up and go energy with it because when the cast are interacting with each other, it's really good and it's really got energy and you know, it's funny. And then suddenly they go, oh, hang on a minute, we are doing a film. We've got to do a script and a plot in a minute. Right, plot starts now. Despite what I'm saying and sounding quite negative about the film, there is a lot to like about it. Go and see it for the cast, go and see it for the humor. They are both excellent. Just don't expect to have the same love and appreciation that you had for the original film. Okay, and the other film I went to see was Star Trek Beyond, the third film in the rebooted uh, Star Trek series. I'm happy to report that I absolutely loved it. It's not perfect, no, but it is a great popcorn summer action box office extravaganza. This is the 50th anniversary of Star Trek, and I'm not a massive Trekkie. I've always liked Star Wars more. But I am part of a generation that here in the UK, BBC Two meant just three things. After school, there was The Simpsons, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Neighbours, sorry, four things, and of course, Star Trek. The Next Generation. This film is co-written by Simon Pegg as, and has some uh, wonderfully meta comedy. The way that they destroy the villains at the end just had me beaming a massive smile on my face and also tapping my feet along to the soundtrack. Also what Simon Pegg and his co-writer managed to do is successfully do Screenwriting 101. You get a group of people together that people know and then you split them up and you put them in interesting combinations. And then you can flit about telling the story from various different viewpoints. Things that I didn't quite like about it are, yes, it's a little bit slow at times. And also some of the action sequences, blimey. It was, it was like this. And seeing it in 3D, 
uh, yeah, I had to raise my glasses up a few times just to just to step back. Idris Elba. Oh, I didn't say anything about Idris Elba. Amazing as the villain. He at no point tips over into the campy kind of villain that um, so easily could have happened. And as the film goes along, his character only gets better. And this, actually, about the whole film, it does get better as it goes along. Yeah, it, it does build correctly, and it has a proper climax. Yeah, I enjoyed Star Trek Beyond. Uh, please go and see it. If, you, if you're in need of just escaping for a couple of hours, then yeah, this, this is the film to go and see this summer. So there we go, that is just a really quick drive-by review of Ghostbusters and Star Trek Beyond. What are your thoughts on them? Please let me know in the comments below. I promise I will have the sleuth review for the 501 must-see movies up really soon. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Please remember to subscribe and hit the like button. Anything else that you have to do? Um, yeah, just come back for the next one, please.